Hello, once again, let's talk about media and communication. Today, we examine how polarization in Turkey affects uh, trust in news on social media and also perceptions of misinformation. We have two guests with us today, Chigdem Bosdag from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands, again with us, and Suncham Kocher from Koch University in Turkey. Both our guests will help us understand uh, users' strategies for validating information and this concept of skeptical inertia in a polarized news environment. So well, altogether, let's unravel this complexity of polarization and its impact on news perception. Chigdem, Sucham, welcome. Chigdem, to, I'll start with you uh, and to, to give also some context to our listeners as we record this. There is an election process happening in Turkey, which is always a time of communication overflow on social media and on the news. And I would start to ask you about the importance of this research. Uh, thank you, Rodrigo. Uh, misinformation itself has become a key topic in communication and media studies, looking at the increasing possibilities of dissemination of uh, misinformation, also looking at the personalized news and media uh, information environments of the users. It, is, it has become very difficult to assess and validate information on the side of the users. And because of these difficulties, most of the studies so far also focused, um, or most of the studies up to the point that we did this research, we're focusing more on the side of media literacy, looking at um, perception of misinformation and an assessment of misinformation as a matter of being able to apply the right skills. Um, and we have seen uh, with Sunjam that uh, result, the studies focusing on Turkey show that there is a high concern on the side of the users uh, about misinformation. And we wanted to understand the Turkish context uh, and understand the users' perceptions and, and engagements with uh, misinformation. But we also believe that it is important to understand misinformation within particular contexts. And the co context of, of Turkey is a severely par uh, polarized context. And we uh, saw ourselves that during the focus groups and during the research pro uh, project that polarization was one of the key elements uh, defining how users engage with misinformation. And this was again uh, in the pre-period of elections in Turkey, uh, the previous local elections. And we have seen that this polarized environment had a very important impact on the way people uh, search for information about the elections and the political parties as well. Of course, uh, Sunsem, uh, you and Chingdom wrote in the article that the research gap uh, is the lack of studies exploring the context that influences the relationship between polarization, uh, online news consumption, and misinformation in the specific case of Turkey. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. In general, too, um, the literature uh, tends to treat misinformation as a floating global category, in fact. And media literacy is often presented as a global solution uh, to uh, misinformation, almost like a global antidote. Uh, of course, these things are very important, but uh, we need to situate um, these concepts into specific uh, social and political contexts, right? Uh, that's what uh, we wanted to do uh, with this uh, study. As Chidan was saying, Turkey is severely polarized. Uh, niche users in Turkey often um, frequently complain about uh, their constant exposure to uh, false news. Trust in institutions in general and media specifically is increasingly low. So how these things affect how people access, um, use and disseminate uh, information and news. Um, how political polarization influences the users trust in news and their perception of misinformation. We wanted to explore the factors driving uh, uh, social media users' assessment of information accuracy. Uh, what determines their actions, for instance, in the face of uh, what they perceive as misinformation, right? And how do they seek to establish, because these people continue using uh, news, these people continue validating in one way or another the information uh, that they access, how do they uh, establish their trust in this information. Okay, so 
with this uh, promising context. Chigdam, let us know about the findings. And I understand that you're going to grasp the uh, concept of skeptical inertia. Let us jump to the findings. Um, we had a in this study we had a multi-method uh, research design. We combined focus groups, comparing different age groups and different socioeconomic groups, um, and we followed up with media diaries and individual interviews. Um, during the focus groups, we saw that people indeed adopted a lot of different techniques for assessing information. These techniques uh, differed. According to age groups, for example, uh, we have, although we cannot completely generalize, we saw that younger people adopted a bit more complex techniques, including things like um, comparing multiple sources, looking at the number of likes, looking at the comments and the number of likes within the comments, um, or for example, uh, employing methods like image search in Google. Um, but also the older users that we interviewed did have certain strategies, for example, seeing particular information and validating them through uh, established news outlets and so on and so forth. So all these techniques that can be considered within the framework of media literacy and news literacy were indeed in practice. However, when it came to the news articles that were more related to political topics or politicized topics as the uh, interviewees uh, define them um, uh, in that form. They also refer to these types of news as political news. Then more effective strategies came into the practice. So they were uh, then evaluating information, not on the basis of the accuracy of the information, but on the basis of the political stance that they could read within this particular news article or this particular information. So um, in that sense, they would choose, consciously choose to stay in line with their already existing political views. So this was one thing that struck uh, both of us during the research project, how aware the users were about the politicized and polarized environment uh, of information and news in Turkey. And they were saying very openly that when they see such an information, they instead of, although they are so skeptical and aware of this situation, they would rather uh, choose to be passive and remain in line with their already existing view. So this phenomenon of being aware of the politicized situation and the biased uh, assessment of news, but doing nothing or uh, remaining in line with the existing views was for, uh, referred to as skeptical inertia in our article. Very interesting. Thank you, Jigdem. Sunsem, I am curious now uh, to hear about the potential policy impacts. Can you tell us more about that? That's often the hardest question, right? Uh, to translate research finding, findings into uh, policy contexts. Uh, but what we suggest here is to go to the beginning, uh, to the starting point. You know, we need to uh, focus on uh, or locate our research efforts uh, next to the users first to begin with, right? Uh, we need to understand, first of all, how they draw the line between what is accurate and inaccurate uh, if we want to really develop uh, resilience in the face of misinformation, uh, trying to understand the issue from their perspectives first. And we can do that by forming interdisciplinary and intersectoral uh, groups who would engage in conversation um, from uh, the from the from the perspectives of the users uh, to begin with so that's one thing that we can suggest uh, as a starting point of course we can talk about um, how to decrease uh, polarization in a context like Turkey uh, like you know we need uh, more political transparency we need better freedom of press but that is almost beyond uh, uh, the focus of this discussion uh, today uh, we do what we are trained to do, uh, to, to start uh, by researching uh, with a shift, shifted uh, focus, uh, which is on the users. Uh, that's good. Uh, Chigdem, you both, so you and Sunsem mentioned in this conversation, high polarization in Turkey, low media trust, different behavior from younger and older generations. So it seems to me that there are a lot, several venues for future research here. So what's ahead of us now, research-wise? Um, 
I think we need, uh, as our research shows, uh, adopting a qualitative, in-depth um, and multi-level study, um, it is important to also look at this issue in a particular context. So we need, firstly, more contextualized uh, research project, uh, projects that look into this topic in depth in particular situated contexts. And I, I think uh, we both agree that more comparative research could be interesting as polarization, just like misinformation, is not a globally floating term, but it is experienced um, within particular contexts. So polarization might mean very different things in the context of Turkey than in the context of US uh, or Brazil or in any, any other context, for example. So comparative studies could be really insightful in this regard. Um, and we also believe that looking at the influences of topics, for example, which topics are uh, more um, vulnerable uh, to misinformation than others, or looking at um, the different time periods, for example, pre-election uh, periods might be very differently experienced by the users than other periods. This, these could also all uh, lead to very interesting research projects in relation to misinformation um, and polarization broadly. Um, and we also believe that it's important to understand what makes users also more resilient uh, to misinformation. Sunsem, what uh, um, other materials, content can you share with our listeners to explore this topic? Sure. Um, there are always the annual studies focusing on different countries, uh, like the Reuters Digital News Reports and uh, other reports by respected institutes. But this literature is very exciting in and on itself, um, especially with the recent epistemological discussions around misinformation. Um, for instance, Sasha Altai and his friends are writing about misinformation on misinformation, uh, how we uh, understand misinformation and how we misunderstand misinformation. Uh, that's a very interesting article. Also also, there is this shift uh, in the literature now towards rather qualitative studies, uh, as e exemplified by Garusia and Splendore's uh, recent article on advancing a qualitative turn in news media and trust research. Chidem and I write uh, together and uh, separately on this issue. Uh, Chidem has wonderful uh, individual articles about uh, online networks in the context of polarization. Uh, I do run a lab in Turkey, in Podemi Lab, and uh, we, we continue our research uh, with my crew. Um, Infodemilab.com can be visited um, for the context of Turkey anyway. And uh, overall, this uh, scholarly literature is very exciting. And uh, podcast show like, uh, shows like this one is uh, reaching out to diverse publics as well. Well, thank you for the promotion of all the involved people <laughs> in this in this talk. Uh, for those who are listening to us on the Let's Talk About Meeting Communication website, the recommended materials that Sunsam just uh, gave us, you can find them uh, below uh, the video. So all the recommended materials are available for you to, to check. Chigdem, let's bring this conversation to a grand finale. So what's the punchline that perfectly captures the essence of our conversation today? Um, misinformation itself is not a neutral thing. It happens within particular contexts. And in the very polarized context of uh, Turkey, we saw that polarization, which, which itself can take many different shapes in different contexts, has a severe effect on the way people perceive information and engage with information. And for this reason, we would like to emphasize the importance of contextualized qualitative studies looking at this uh, uh, topic, understanding misinformation from the perspective of the users. Thank you. Jigdem and Sutsem, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, for those who are watching us on YouTube, you can find all the resources, the article, and all the materials of this conversation on the Let's Talk About uh, Meeting Communication website. And you can also listen to this episode wherever you get your podcast.